I mean, to put us, yeah, to put us in. A, I don't know whether it's possible to make a sort of fishbowl. Did you, Carla? Did you work out something for this? No, I'm not thinking of a fishbowl. Just to be on a row like that. So like no, in, unfortunately, it's not possible. Okay. You have to see the people. Otherwise, it. Okay. Okay, what do you think, David? I think that's fine, Werner. If you want to go first, I think that's excellent. No, it's okay, it's okay. But listen, I don't know. Um, what the program says that I will be the first, then uh, Werner and so and so. Shall we keep it? Shall we keep the program? Uh, I, I, that's also okay. That's also okay. It's also okay. Okay, so shall I start or? Oh, okay. Mike Werner wants to start. I don't understand. Oh, I, I suggest okay. that we go on in a historical order, which means the, the longest behind presidency is, and then the next one. Uh, this means me, Louisa. Uh, so you have uh, been before Gerard me. And Sorry, Werner. You mean that you have been before me? Yes. I don't... No, I was before you. I had the... <laughs> Not Sorry, you have been president before me. This is what you mean? Yes. Yeah, yes. You see how difficult it is to establish even the most basic facts of history. <laughs> <laughs> to establish even? Okay. Uh, so, Werner, why don't you start off? Okay. I want to say something about my, my time as president of the Group Analytic Society, which was from 1999 to 2002. And uh, I'll give you a short outline on how I entered the group analytic field, which was mainly because of the democratic group culture, which I entered into a self-experienced group in Lindau Psychotherapy Wochen with Ilse Seglov. He was, uh, she was a friend of Fuchs, and was a member of the group and society and started one of the first doing groups for younger generations in Germany. As a Jew and, and communist, she had to flee like Fuchs 1993 from Frankfurt through Paris where she met Fuchs and to England. There she started a training program uh, and was still a member of, uh, from the, I think from the start, a member of the Group Energy Society. When the Group Energy Society was founded, I was six years old. So I'm one of the first generation after the Second World War, just born one year after the end of the war, 8th of May, 1946. Mm -hmm. The war ended 1945. So this was very deep in my, own uh, development and this uh, I was fascinated got fascinated by the democratic group culture in which I entered, which included always in Ilse Seglow's group a political discussion, the Nazis and the Jews. Now Ilse Seglow uh, encouraged a group of young German group analysts trained by her, Liesl Hurst and uh, Gregory van der Klei from IGA London, and uh, to encourage this group to start a group analytic training in Germany, which we did. We started the foundation of the Institute of Group Analysis in Heidelberg, Germany. I entered the Group Analytic Society working for it in various subcommittees first. The first one was a constitutional subcommittee, which had the task to change the constitution according to its international membership and to kick out some category overseas members. First, there were UK members and overseas members. And uh, this uh, succeeded in a HEM, the constitution was accordingly changed. The next one was a symposium subcommittee and then an international developmental subcommittee 
with a task to change the name from uh, London in brackets to Gassi, which we have now. The European Symposium Subcommittee, Gera knows better about that than me. You were a long-term member of it. Yes, that's yes. true, yes. The European Symposium Subcommittee. The yeah. task was, in my view, to move the symposia wieder again to various uh, countries in, in Europe, oh. which was successful in the end. At the Zagreb IGPA conference in uh, 1978, Janis Zegers and myself started to think about uh, the uh, foundation of an institution which makes an exchange between various training institutions uh, possible on an equal level and to become more independent from IGA London, because in the first place, IGA London was the one who trained overseas. Now there were different uh, institutions in various countries and Egatine was then founded as uh, a, a move to more democratic uh, uh, exchange platform in a way between institutions on training matters still existing, still flourishing. Now the first European symposium in Germany was in Heidelberg. David, you mentioned it already as your, in a way, start to the Kuberi Society. And uh, in this conference, the main topic was the history between Germans and Jews. And we had a big discussions in the large group about it and various uh, subcommittees and plenaries about it. Now, for, I, I was one of the chair of this uh, symposium together with Ursula Keller-Husemann. And in the beginning, there was a lot of mistrust from the UK members, mainly in the management committee, that we will be successful, that people will come to Germany, that Germany is still a country of uh, Nazis, which is uh, in one sense was true. And, uh, but in the end we got it, although with a, a preparing group composed by the local organizing group and senior members from the United Kingdom. Werner, excuse me, would you like to speak a little bit louder? Do you mind? I think it's your, like it's your it's your speaker, Louisa. You no, I have put this maximum. Okay, I try, Louisa. If you can, thank you. Yes, thank, you. thank you. If you cannot, okay, I will I will lose. I'm sorry. <laughs> the topic was uh, boundaries and barriers, which was developed by this composed this mixed group from UK members and the local organizing group. And uh, as I said, the main topic was uh, the history between Germans and Jews. And uh, in the end, uh, we tried in the HM, you mentioned that already, David, to change the name of Gas from Gas, Gas in brackets, London to Gassi, but did not succeed. Oh, and you're right, mainly non-UK members voted against it in the AGM. So we had this had to wait. Now in 1999 at the Budapest Symposium, I was elected as a president of the Group Learning Society. And I did know that what I faced, first of all, I faced a totally unclear situation between IGA London and GAS London. Nobody knew what belongs to whom, what, what money belongs to what institution. And this was my first task to clarify that because with the demands, what IGA said, what group the group is who should pay to IGA, this would have been bankrupt, bankruptcy for group and society. So I had to clarify that, which uh, provoked a lot of anger from senior UK members. And I was really, the first year of residency was my most difficult time in my whole professional career. 
because I got lots of emails calling me Nazi and dictator, etc. This was then clarified in an AGM with the support of Maurice Nitzen. He was very active in that to clarify that. And uh, I published these emails and then I got a lot of support. And after that, the presidency was much more constructive. It was always very constructive in the management committee, but not with some senior members from the UK. So, So the so offenses were, were very heavy. And I first uh, also got offenses in Germany when I published a paper on the power of the, of the group analytic group against uh, undemocratic structures. Now the finances were clarified. The group and society was in a way saved financially and uh, clear also about the non-financial uh, goods like Dalem Gardens. Adele Mittwoch, the late Adele Mittwoch was that time treasurer of IGA London and she helped a lot to find out that the Group Analytic Society possesses the library and the library room of Dalem Gardens, which made possible that all committee meetings uh, could take place, take place in the library in London, in Darren Gardens, with no charge. And I think it's still the case. You can do that until now. Now, finally, this name was changed. I don't really rem remember where and when. In London. Where, you in know, London. It was in London. At, at, London uh, and an AGM. In London, yeah. in, that, in what year? In which year? That was it. We're under Robbie's presidency. Which year was the London Symposium? It was eleven. Eleven. Twenty eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. It was nine years later. Yeah. It took a long time to change that name again after we, after I have left presidency. Hmm. This um, when I handed over to. Uh, to ask uh, Louisa to become president. She was elected at the Bologna Symposium each year. And uh, the topic- I do not understand what you are saying. I'm you sorry. were elected at the Symposium in Bologna as a president. It was 2008. 2002, not eight. I remember eight. No, it was two, it was two. Are yeah. you sure? Yes, yeah, sure. because I've just... It was uh, at the uh, end of the symposium in Bologna with the topic, the economy of the group. Yes. Now, this uh, topic fascinated me a lot because uh, the background is sharing makes you richer. Sharing in a group makes you richer, not... Sharing in a... In a group makes you richer. Ah, sure. It doesn't take something away from you. Sure. Many patients, when they applied for a group therapy, said, no, I don't want it because I have to share you as a group therapist with seven other people, which is not true. They got much more. Sharing makes you richer. This was a, a, another concern also in the, in the, as the president was to support empirical research because mm -hmm. in my view, empirical research saves the survival of group analysis. It's not much done until now. We succeeded in Germany with empirical research because group psychotherapy became a main topic for insurance companies to be supported financially, much doubled than before. And it went into the, the plan of the government to support group psychotherapy. My actual concern is the value of group analysis in a shareholder value dominated economic situation. How can we uh, survive in this uh, economic situation, which produces a lot of crisis as well as David mentioned it already, with the idea that a democratic group culture 
makes each member of the group richer. The, uh, in, the, in a shareholder value economy, it is the opposite. Sharing makes you poorer. Um, would you like to hand over to Louisa now, Werner, and then we can have some time for maybe discussion. Yes, I just want to, to say one point. Uh, the other thing is that we, that we defend a democratic culture. And this was one of the tasks in Belgrade to avoid a nationalistic Milosevic uh, ambassador as an opening lecturer. Because this was uh, in danger that he will do it. But uh, I think for a group and a society with a democratic value, it's impossible to have an opening lecture as a nationalistic uh, man who denies Sebrenica and was a yeah. Yeah. in the Milovic uh, um, uh, regime. Okay, that's the end. Okay. Um, so, Louisa, wow. and uh, uh, Robbie, you've lowered your hand, so I can't see you at the moment. Listen. No, I don't understand. You want me to start? Yes. Yeah. Listen, I have prepared a paper, so I will read it, and uh, here it is. I will go okay. through this, okay? So I hope you will enjoy, and uh, I am very curious about your impression on this thing. Okay. And I also am very touched by the fact that you are mentioning economy in some way, Werner, and this is in some way something on the... Do you have a sense of how long your paper is? I yeah. hope it will be. I have tried to do this. You said 10, 15 minutes. So okay. it will be 10, 15 minutes. Okay. okay? Yeah. 15. Individual group dialectic to share hope for a better future. I have been teaching for many years psychodynamics as a faculty of psychology of Bologna University as full professor and explaining to students the different theoretical position in this field, sometimes I was even embarrassed due to some aspect of the theory that seemed to me incredible, unacceptable, reductive interpretation elaboration of the reality. When I discovered the group analysis and its dialectical continuity between individual and society and vice versa, I found myself relieved in a position of great approval and gratitude for this vision of the world. Basic for me has been the theoretical understanding of this dialogic continuity between individuals and society being reciprocally the result and the raison d'etre of each part involved. Rob Norbert Elias, one of our founders, has been illuminating through his book, The Society of Individuals, that was able to put together social, relational dynamism and intrapsychic aspects of life. This is the reason why I decided to dedicate my main interest of knowledge, application and research to this special theoretical point of view, group analysis, that we are celebrating today as an important voice in the psychological thinking. I started taking contact with all my beloved colleagues in London. I, I, I feel a lot of, of uh, emotion and love for these people. Um, Malcolm Pines, Estella Weldon, Earl Hopper, Dennis Brown, Jason Maratos, Gerald Wooster, and from outside, Ivan Urlich, Robert Friedman, um, Werner Knaus, Gerda Winter, and many others with whom I developed good friendship and with whom I spent the most interesting professional period of, my, of 20 years of my life, going from Bologna to London and back once a month, month for a long weekend. Now making the counts, I, I was <laughs> astonished, but this was the case. <laughs> I also had the pleasure to organize a very interesting and successful conference at Bologna University in 2002, you are right, I made a mistake, 2002. The, lit the title was The Economy of the Group, The Emergence of Relational Goods in Society, Mind and Brain. The subject was putting into evidence re the richness of the relational aspect of the group with the idea that such richness could put into evidence the great potential of this group, of this way of relating between human beings and as an application in the clinical field. We started imagining the group as a tool for the production of a theoretically infinite number of relational goods. As soon as plurality, diversity, resonance, and acceptance can be seen at the basis of group dynamics. 
what Werner was saying before, that you get rich through this. It was not in my intention, but a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the concept of economics seemed to prepare a further reflection that I discovered through a very special use of the group made by Muhammad Yunus, 2006 Nobel Peace Prize. He used the group as an instrument to give money on trust, where the trust instrument was the relational system of the group. From the economy of the group to economics, seen from a group analytic perspective, from the point of view of the relational system that is generated through social rules, both implicit and explicit. Economics from Greek etymology, oikos nomos, the rule of the family home has been the point of interest, starting from the microcredit process created by Muhammad Yunus, that, as I said, used the group as a basic tool able to put together a relational system to help people to develop their capabilities, according to Amartya Sen thinking, Nobel for Economics 2004. Wherever this methodology is applied, the repayment rate is above the 99% as demonstration of the good functioning of this relational good system. We are talking about a tool that is able to create best conditions for individuals to develop their capabilities, giving back a great support to self-esteem and other psychological ingredients for mental health support. The application of this instrument should be studied in a deeper way from a psychological point of view what i am doing now 13 years ago as department of psychology we started a research applying microcredit to patients of the psychiatric center in carti a little town near modena the work has been done using groups of volunteers interested in trying this possibility the group was meeting once a week and the subject of the group was how to develop my potentiality through an economical health the psychological contents emerging were related mostly to a past where all their initiatives were um, frustrated by parents. Little by little, through a clinical approach, the difficult past uh, by the difficult past has become a hopeful future. The project was supported by the municipality of Carpi and the bank that was available to give the money under the approval of the responsible for the experience. 14, 45 people took part in the project since, and 15 projects have been developed successfully. Some patients have been able to change in a profitable way their lives and to leave so the psychiatric center. It was a win-win solution according to John Nash theory because both the par parties were able to gain in this virtuous perspective, the patients and the community. In fact, if we want to reflect on this experience, we can say that it is something that stands between subjective, intrapsychic, relational and social, where each part gains. I was fascinating, fascinated by this experience and I tried to elaborate and, and, and understand the meaning of this process and its intertwining. The situation was such that, as I said, individual subjective, relational and social aspects were put together in a virtuous dialectical circle that included also the political sphere, police, society. Group analytic thinking and practice could be part of our effort to understand which groups, which policies are better to develop individuals able to give back good results to policies, to society. We know how important is the good elaboration of this dialectic as a matter of mental health results. We normally start from looking at problematic relational system in the family that can become psychopathology for some individuals part of it. In the same way as group analysis is able to understand which could be the best rules for the individuals in the family groups, group analysis could help in finding the best rules for the coexistence in society. I think this could be <laughs> a challenge. We live in a world where the implicit rule, according to John Nash game theory in our relations, is win, lose, lose, win. That means that we have one winner over the others and the others will be put in the discharge of the exclusion, marginality and poverty. And we see this now very, very in a very incredible way. We can witness now the results of this process, generating disasters all over the world at many levels from the concreteness of earth resources to human resources as a relational system. Do we think that it is possible that psychopathology is encouraged in the lose win we lose process in which we live actually and where people relate each other through enmity and competition? I think so. 
in the same way as I think that a win-win solution could be the best for our coexistence. Win-win means that each of us, that each person that puts his feet on the earth should be should find a decent way of living, and this should be a duty for him and for all the others. Besides this, we can bring into this conversation the discovery of mirror neurons that speak us about the need of empathy that belongs to each of us human beings, in spite of Thomas Hobbes' vision of a world made out of wolves, homo mini lupus, inspired by Plauto. These reflections are part of a work that applies group analytic thinking that we could call political perspective. I think that in the same way as we can offer help and good advices for the creation of good and profitable relations inside the family, we could be asked and we could give good contribution to generate a world where not only we can help people to overcome psychopathological suffering due to the family relational system, but we could be useful in helping prevention in the social political process as a matter of healthy togetherness and cohabitation of the earth. I think that us as group analysts can be even more useful also in the application of our knowledge and practice to the society, to the police through a political perspective. In other words, it could be interesting to be part in the political process to give our advice and contribution. No more only economists should be the counselor for the project for our world, but at least a multidisciplinary group of experts taking care of human beings in their different facets and needs. We can support this idea also in the light of the human and natural disaster that we are witnessing in this period. Looking at an hopeful future. With the, this think, thinking, I would like, finish one, one, one page. With this thinking, I would like to propose the creation of a working group dedicated to how our group analysts can contribute in the research of the best possible coexistence in the police as citizens. European economic support in terms of corporate research proposal could be an opportunity to develop knowledge, collaboration and contribution for our humanity. We are witnessing in these times material and relational damages created by those who have governed till now according to a voracious economical thinking and practice. To make efforts for the creation of a win win togetherness to share hope, responsibility, and commitment, no more having as our duty only the reparation of the damages created by the political and economic system, only focused on the voracity of the individuals fighting each other for the first place of the winner against all the others. Togetherness and good relational system can be the hope for a fruitful and happy society of individuals. <laughs> like uh, like uh, our Norbert Elias. Um, I thank the whole community of the group analytic thinking for listening to me with the hope that we will be able to create a good working group with the intention to help all of us in generating a better world. Professoressa Luisa Brunori, with the collaboration of Dr. Massimiliano Tomasi, that is close to me here in the in the presentation. So this is my, my desire and my proposal and my hope for our collaboration and for our future. At least we, I think we should give a contribution and we should be, should be taken into consideration for our contribution. Finished, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you for galloping through that, Louisa. Sorry? Thank you for galloping through that so, so quickly. So did I? Uh, did I use, uh, is it correct the time? Because I- Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. Is it correct? So yeah. did you understand something or what is? <laughs> I think so, yeah. I, I was thinking that you should start a special interest group and gather some people, some other members. Yes. To, yeah, to, to have some conversations with you about this. If possible, I would be delighted. That's what you should do. Uh, so maybe we should go on to Gerda now. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> my uh, my acquaintance with group analysis was in 1980 at the IADP uh, conference in Copenhagen, which was very successful. And in connection with that, I think yes, we started. We were trained by the English, who came over ten times a year for five years, I think, something like that. And it was Liesl Hurst and. Colin James, Mick Sharp, and uh, the first, can I remember his name? Okay, we'll come back. 
sorry, because I've had, I've just had uh, Corona. Oh, <laughs> I have some oh, after effects where it's uh, difficult, <laughs> difficult to think. And to, Do you have Corona now, Gerda? No, no, it's over, but you know, somebody can have some uh, after effects of it with, with uh, tiredness and uh, difficulty in concentrating and so on. So if I forget some names, that's because of that. And of course, I'm an old lady also. Well, uh, I think my first uh, connection with uh, the Group Grand Society were the two, uh, two, two uh, uh, symposiums in Oxford. And there, I, I think I got in contact with uh, Werner and was asked to take part in the scientific committee for the uh, Heidelberg Symposium. And then it took off from there. And then after that, I have been in, I don't know how many committees and so on mm -hmm. along the way, which has been very, very fruitful for me. Sorry, and, it's very difficult to understand, Gerda. Can you shout okay. a bit? No, I try. It has been very fruitful the, to work with all these people in committees and, uh, and projects and symposiums and so on. It's been really, really, something very important in my life. And it has been, group analysis has been, well, I must say the most important influence uh, for my work, for my look on the world and to understand how groups functions together or don't functions together and so on. And I, in connection with this, uh, this uh, weekend here, I. I came back to uh, to look at I have, when I was president from I think it was 2006 to 11 or 12, and okay. I had every uh, every time context came out I had written a president's page, and so I look at them together and I could really see there what has been my interest during these years, mm. and uh, what I was very interested in was to to establish good connections with IDA. And it took some meetings and it was, uh, it, sometimes it was difficult, but on the whole, I think we worked well together and it ended up in a research project. We were both part IDA and, and Gazi were part of, and uh, it came out with a, I think it was about uh, the evaluation of the effects of dynamic group psychotherapy and, and uh, group analysis. And it had some good results. There were some good effects of this, uh, of these, but they could not differentiate it between usual, I, I must say, usual uh, psychodynamic group psychotherapy and group analysis. But anyhow, it was uh, the most important, I think, was that it, uh, it put uh, Gazi and uh, EIGA together and established a very good re working relationship. Then another thing that was very important for me was uh, to go against this evidence, evidence things that were very up at the time and uh, not, not go against it, but take it into consideration and try to, try to tell that it was, it was really important that we took that seriously. Werner was uh, talked a bit about that too, because we will not be accepted without having some evidence for our work. And uh, I think we are still in that problem. I think this evidence goes this everywhere still. And I, in some ways, I understand it because it is it's understandable that people want to know what their money goes to if it helps them. And in another way, it has been too too uh, too much of it. In fact, another thing I was that was important for me was uh, to to try to follow the new times in in this respect of uh, accepting short-term groups. Before that, you almost only seen long-term groups, stranger groups. But in some years, that was almost impossible to find that in hospital departments anymore. And then I started being interested in it. I think it was 
I think it was very interesting to see what could be could be accomplished in a shorter time. And I still think that uh, it is very effective for some people and not for others. But uh, I think that it has uh, well that it has been established also. And in that connection, I in connection I worked together with uh, Steiner Lorenzen from Norway, where he was writing a manual for long-term uh, stranger groups and also for short-term groups and had very good results with his, uh, with, with his work with those two sorts of groups. So that was that, but can I see? Mm -hmm. You know, I also think it was important for me to, to what, how can I explain it? To work, to, that we worked well together in the, in the committee, in the management committee. I think that was very important for me that this group could function well. And I think it, I think it did uh, along the way and a long time, but I also think there were problems, of course, but I think we, uh, we solved them. So, but I have very good memories for working in, in fact, for working in all uh, these uh, uh, professional groups or committees and things like that. It's, it has been a great pleasure for me. And I love that work. I think uh, nowadays, getting a bit tired of it. I don't want to sit in any more, in any more committees, I think. <laughs> I was in, in a couple of one here, short, short time ago, and that was really difficult, I must say. So after that, I think, okay, your time is up. Mm. Uh, but uh, what can I say else? I, yes, I think- uh, Chair at the Copenhagen Symposium. Oh yes, I forgot. <laughs> I was chairperson of the Copenhagen Symposium in 1996. And I think it was a very successful symposium too, very well. And I enjoyed uh, chairing it, really. It attracted a lot of members, colleagues from the United States. It did, it did. And, and I can still remember this uh, big hall where we had the large group. Yeah. There was the most fantastic acoustics. We have never had that good acoustics after that. No, it was, it was really nice. And also um, the London Symposium and the, uh, uh, what was it, the London Symposium and then the Dublin, especially the Dublin Symposium was very nice. And I must say that is, uh, that is some side effects of this work is that you come around the world and you really learn people, you, you come close to their lives and how they live and how they, work and how they decorate their houses. And in all small details, I think that's, that's been extremely nice and people have always been so nice. So that's a good part of it. Well, I can't remember more now. I think yeah, the, the, the survey, in order to change the name of Gazi, Gaz London to Gaz International, was during your um, chair? Oh, yes, it was. It yes. was. I remember I made up this questionnaire. Yes. And sent mm. it out. I was there too, so. Yeah, that's right. You were in that committee too. Huh. And I also very well remember Brian Boswood. And in exactly as uh, Werner said, that he was interested in contact, even when he knew he was dying. And I wrote to him. And. Uh, to, well, yes, something about uh, what I thought about him, what he had taught me and things like that. And he, he answered my letter with a very, very nice letter, really. And it was, I think it was a week before he died that I received that. Mm -hmm. It was really touching. Mm -hmm. So there are many memories of that sort. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I don't think I will say more okay. now. And I, I hope we have some time to discuss also. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Gerda. You you have done such a lot for Gassi, such a lot. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Very very aware of it. Um, so, Robbie. Um, yeah, maybe I continue. Uh, I actually learned a lot in 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 the society when I became. A management committee member. <clears throat> Actually, my big teacher was where was you, Gerda? Mm. 
the way you um, the way you manage the management committee. I think there were some things we are not talking about, but I felt them very strongly. Uh, it was that uh, there had been a, a big crisis in the management committee before you, and uh, it, there was a feeling that we have to be um, very cautious, and you did this work, and actually I learned a lot. My introduction, I, I came from another board of the IAGP, where I actually knew some people, Earl I knew from there, and uh, other people I, and I was, uh, I, I liked it, but I didn't like it enough, and I uh, was very interested when I entered the Gazi, Gaz was then. And my introduction was Isaura's uh, committee uh, where I participated to, to find out what, what we really want, where we want to go. I have just want to say about two things. One is that Ghazi, yes, we changed it after, after long um, discussions, but part of it, it was because of me. Because in my family, you couldn't say the name Gaz. <clears throat> I'm a first uh, uh, generation from Shoah people. And in my family, if you said Gaz, it was terrible. And I said this, that it was difficult. I said that I didn't understand how people before me were able to express it. And I think you and the others brought maybe also other, other uh, of course, um, it, it's not only about me, but, um, but I liked Gazi and it helped me. And the other thing I want to say about, um, about this crisis, which continued, of course, there was a difficulty to accept me as a Jew, as an Israeli, because I, uh, for many people, I, uh, seem to um, personify uh, personify something. Uh, I don't know. Um, you 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 all know of this um, uh, occupation and other Israeli uh, ways. But and it took and it, it took me a year, more or less, to overcome these issues. The Part of it, it was because I was Jewish and there was certainly a, a lot of things also in the management committee, which we overcame by when I became president, by um, a, big, a big conflict, but afterwards it was over and uh, people accepted me and actually accepted many of the ideas which were not so easy to to bring the main issue for me and for others in, in the management committee was internationalization. Um, uh, the other thing was continue their relations with, um, with the IGA. Actually, Gerda uh, took me into, took me with her in, for, in some meetings already before. And I think a year after I became president, there was really a good, uh, some good meetings and the IGA got back to a tradition they had that becoming for every student became automatically a member of Ghazi. Uh, and this brought another three, two, 300 people into Ghazi. And um, I, I think I, I wanted to do this also in other places in the world. It's not so easy. I think because, because of the language, but I wouldn't, I would say it, it would be a great idea to continue this, this thing that people in the local organizations immediately become part of also the, the umbrella organizations. 
the other thing was internationalization, as I said, I had uh, some partners. The first partner, I would say Marina would help me, or I, I think uh, you were dom nominated to be something, the uh, relation with the, with the institutes in Europe, or, and then we did the summer school together. We, we, we had this idea, and I think I, I was helped enormously by your contribution. And so for me, the summer school was like a symbol of internationalization because it's a meeting where you really, you really meet other people. And for me, the, the setting of, of the management committee at the beginning only in London and more than half of the, of the people, uh, of the members were, were uh, English, UK based. And I thought it was, it was impo important to bring other people inside. I, I couldn't understand. I mean, I saw the group analytic world growing, 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 growing into Germany. I mean, Germany, Belgrade, other places, Israel. I saw my, my institute um, having such a, a development uh, and I saw this all over, also in Norway. I, I, I couldn't think that there will not be more. And I want to say some other thing about internationalization. I think it is a power struggle, of course, between people in, in the UK, which were used to have almost a monopoly about group analysis. And now it looks differently when you look at from, from outside. And I couldn't, I don't understand. I tried, I think I gave my contribution by helping the, the journal in many ways, the, the, the international journal, but I don't think the international journal should be only publishing articles in English. Uh, maybe translated into English, but they should do a constant, a constant cooperation with other journals, with the German journal, with, with I don't know the Italian journal, with, uh, with other. There must be a part which is international, because if not, it's just the initiative of someone. But that's the way I see it. I, I think the system has to get out of. We are Fuchs descendants, and we, and I, I think it happens, but I would like from the side to do more. I think these special interest groups are really good. I, I participated, I did one with the Marit. I know Marit continues something. I, I tried to start, but it was not easy. But I think you, you, you're. What I saw, it was great, great work. I mean, we did the SIG, Special Interest Group, International, a lot of people came from many places. It was about dreams, but you can have hundreds of other themes. So actually, I thought in these two terms I served that I really learned a lot and um yeah i think it was important for me and i think i hope i contributed uh, we did for example just because my, i look my time is not yet over i, I have one one minute at uh, nine minutes so i have um i give you another way of looking at, at it uh when we did the symposium in in Lisbon, um, we had uh, big fears that we will lose money. It was, 
after London, we had a big crisis. Our um, uh, person of money just went away and I started to ask institutes all over, which I knew, but not only which I knew, to back us in, in times when, if we lose money because we, we, we couldn't afford this. And I think eight or nine institutes, everybody backed us with, with a thousand pounds, I think. And this is the way, um, this is the way, the, 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 the start of the Fuchs Fund. The Fuchs Fund is something very international. Why? Because in the symposium, for example, in Germany, we already had a lot of money, a lot we brought in relatively. And 60 people came to the symposium helped by this Fuchs Fund. 60 people outside the UK, outside Germany, outside in, uh, I think, I think the system. It was uh, even 70, I think. Yes, Gerda, yes, yeah, maybe <laughs> you, you, were, you were the head of this committee and uh, of, of bursary committees, but I, I, if, if I look at it, for me, it's a way to find the means mm. uh, to, to bring together people from outside. Uh, and, and what I'm doing now, and I see other people do it also, there will be a lot of interest uh, from outside uh, uh, Europe and uh, in Russia, of course, there are institutes already. I'm working with the Ukrainians for seven months, eight months now. I can tell you after this war is over, they will open, try to open a group analytic institute. I helped uh, Chinese now to have an introductory course and now they are opening their institute, their qualifying course. Um, I, I'm sure the Indians, you, you see them in, so let's be open because it's not only about survival. We are way over survival. We are in the face of development and we should look at development and development in group analysis is always through the other. It's always through the other. It's always through other people, other thoughts, uh, other energies and um, and I hope we'll we'll continue like it. I, I really welcome all these the, the Belgrade uh, Congress and all what we are doing outside in as to integrate many many inputs into group analysis. So, David, thank you, Robbie. Um... I would just like to take up actually something that you say, which I think it's quite important for us to be able to think about, which is the idea that the relationship between, the continuing relationship between London and the UK and the rest of the, the rest of the society, the society as an international body is primarily about a power struggle and that there's a kind of wish to hold power in the UK, I think that the problem for us, given a wish to make the society more international, is that we have an organization that is constituted legally in the UK, where its bank account is held, where its office has been, although now it's becoming uh, an, a, a virtual office, so we're not so dependent on having a physical office. But I think it is really important that there are real uh, sort of legal technical obstacles to creating a, a society that is truly constituted internationally. And I think there's a real wish to do that. I would certainly be very much in favor of that, but how we, how we set about it. And I'm really not aware of a wish, you know, that's felt amongst the, 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 the British members of the management committee, or, or I would say myself, of a wish to hold power here in here in London, far from it. I mean, I think there's actually a wish to find ways to distribute power and to share it because it's you know it can be very burdensome to have you know to carry too much 
power in a society such as this. So I mean, I, I, I so I, I think that that's a, a, an important, you know, response. But I'm sure that what you say might may be part of the way that it's perceived by people, you know, outside the UK. Well, in my in, in my time, I when I read all these president's notes there. There was one, one subject that was going around all the years, I think. It was talk of the UK chapter. I don't know how far you have gone with that. And the UK chapter was meant to, that there should be a pure English uh, society, and then there should be the international society. But it was, we never, you never reached an, an end to this discussion. So it's sort of a ghost <laughs> where all the time the UK chapter. Um, yes, I'm, I'm very glad to hear this, David. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, maybe we, I don't know what you feel, others on the panel, but maybe we could, for the last 15 minutes, we could open up the yes. discussion and see what thoughts have been provoked in our- Good. David, I cannot hear what you said, sorry. Uh, Louisa, I was just you shouted, please. Louisa, I was suggesting that we might open the discussion to other people in the in the meeting and sure. see what thoughts have arisen for others listening to what the past presidents have had to tell us about their experience. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you for repeating. Thank you. I think.